Hi, my name is Efahan Elbi. Uh, I am the writer and director of In Cold Dark. This is made by Dun on Dun, which is me and my wonderful team. This is our baby, and we're so excited to share it with you. In Cold Dark is a is a narrative, uh, story-based game. I was torn a little bit how to present this to you guys. It's a very chill game. It's very it's very much about reading, patience, choice. So I decided just for the shortest run through of our demo, which is currently out, you can play it yourself at uh, incolddark.com slash play. Please, I invite you to play it. I'd be so excited. I'm going to try not to talk too, too much, but also explain some of the choices behind it. So without further ado, here is In Cold Dark. In Cold Dark opens with a memory, uh, I guess a dream sequence. Your friend Kiraya and uh, a long time ago connection of yours, who obviously was very important. It's the first introduction to the the core concept of the game, which is the idea of choice, but choice without, I guess, what I would put as exclamation points over every single one. Um, the Our life is full of choices every day. and. The theory of the game, sort of the initial inception as to why I began the project at all, was obviously to create a story and tell a story, but also to give the player the idea and the experience of choosing almost by every action or every interaction. Uh, Your connection to Kiraya is obviously highlighted here, but the choices you make do matter. Um, I... I'm always a little torn how much to speak on it because obviously every good game is a mystery box and I would love you to discover it yourself. But what you choose will affect the experiences of what you hear and what you see quite significantly uh, with a lot more intended once we're past the demo phase, we're still building the game. But all the matter and the the, the sort of emotional nuance of conversations also matter as well uh, as you go through. In Cold Dark is uh, is inspired by a lot of games along this genre. Thing, games like Oxenfree, Firewatch, uh, the sort of calmer wander games and stories. But I, every year, it's now been about three years of work on the game, and it, I think it's becoming a little more of its own thing every time, and I'm really happy about that. The style of the game itself is based on my experience as a as an illustrator and just my severe love for pixel art uh, all through the years. Um, my teammate Miguel has been working like crazy to create sets and beautiful, beautiful things. The characters are often my design. Um, the, this particular path has a little bit more of my assets in it, but every scene has been touched by everyone and honestly I couldn't be more proud of pretty much every frame of the game so far. Obviously everything is not final. I'm sure we'll find new ways to to sort of work through things and improve everything. But at its core, it's sort of based in a, I don't know if I would call the space or the the sort of presentation of space realistic, but certainly it's comic booky, <laughs> um, or rather painterly. Um, and I can't wait for you to see it. This is your AI companion, Spark, who has been with you the entire journey. You spent three years out on the rim on your own doing a doing a job for a company called Distant Star, uh, scouting new planets and bringing the information back. Spark is getting a little a little bit detuned, as you can tell, and that makes Spark more sassy and a little insulting at times. But also, obviously, there is a there is a bond here that has developed and Spark's been your companion forever. Again, one of the internal battles that I have with presenting it is to sort of, whether or not to explain 
the sheer amount of variance in every playthrough. Uh, From the get-go in Cold Dark is designed to be played multiple times. The reason for that is actually a core part of the design. It's the inspiration for it was sort of in these in the minor choices that we make every day, and they're and they're sometimes vast impacts on our lives. Sometimes we make big, big life changing choices, and they obviously have a huge, huge impact on what happens. But oftentimes, also our day to day matters. And in the span of this game, which is not it's not an open world game, you can't wander anywhere you want. There is a momentum to the story and a story to be told. But the concept is that no path really curves back on itself. The world is 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 bigger every day that we work on it. Um, but also the idea that it is it is a world left to explore in a way that can't be done in real life. You can choose, and you will choose, and your priorities will determine what's important to you, and you will experience a very particular version of this world. And you can come back and try it again, and try something completely different this time, and see a different angle that you would never have arrived at. Um, the the point is it should never curve back and become sort of a, a full loop so it's the same experience over and over. So this actually, this this ship is, uh, your time here in the cockpit is one of the first times you're actually able to f- make a choice that has an impact on the remainder of the game that is that is different every time. So there's actually a few different activities, more to come hopefully too, but the idea of there is a there's a chance to think about your home and reminisce since your trip is now ending, you're headed back towards towards home again to uh to a Sagi 499, which is a recently colonized section of the galaxy. Um, you can sort of think on what you've left behind and what you might be returning to. There is um, your your work. Uh, there's that left figurine leads you to a TV show that you can catch up on you haven't seen in a while. There are books uh, books to read with. Uh, there's there's a lot of content. <laughs> um, one of the most exciting ones and the ones that I am picking this time around is the ability to navigate your own self back. So Adam has designed up a beautiful navigation game that you will see um, and. I think in a way it becomes a microcosm of the of the overall experience, but this is one moment where you make a choice and you'll be doing this activity during your off moments throughout this journey and you can try something else next time and get a little bit of the world or just ignore the world building if you want. It's your choice. So this first version of the nav is the most complex you can run into at first because this is actually your trip back from the distant rim. It's it's random, so the intent is that it's definitely one of the more difficult, and this embodies the rest of the game's ethos in one place, in the idea that you can try to take this challenge on yourself, and it is it is possible to win to make it to the to the end goal. But also, you can also ask Spark to do it for you, and obviously Spark has the the benefit of a computer processor to sort of tackle all these all these paths at once. What I love about it is neither path is wrong, and and there's actually a separate pleasure and joy in doing both. The solving it yourself will give you one reaction and also maybe some options unlocked down the way. Obviously, your skills are rising at doing this kind of navigation. Um, alternatively, pressing the robo button there is actually very satisfying. I, I love the crap out of it because it's just a great pleasure to watch. You know, Spark does all of these paths at one go, and the one that finally lands is always a surprise to me. I actually am in love with it. So this is a good example of sort of, you have options, none of them are going to end you or end your experience. You can decide to let Spark do it, and you're probably not going to hear the end of it, because Spark will just hold it against you the next time, but it's your choice. Um, Honestly, I'm in love with this whole thing. This is the name entry based on, a, obviously, a beautiful DOS-like interface because I am a giant nerd and I love it to death. So we'll put an Effie.
space always seems to have a sort of a contemplative quality to it in the sense that sort of these big open spaces and, and vast, vast dimensions. In this case, this is the first sort of choice that this is sort of the core decision um, about a great many others. Uh, this is where the, the story branches into sort of three different moral directions. And I don't use morality in the sense of good and bad. Obviously, there are good and bad morals, I do believe. But the, in, this, in this sense of the priorities that the player will find uh, on their way through this adventure. So there is a, there's obviously a momentum to life. We have direction and, you know, uh, intention and history. And, you, and your character has them as well, though, though you discover them slowly. But you just finished a huge job. And one of the big priorities could be to go and, you know, get your money because you've earned it and you spent all this time. You might have other reasons for having dodged out of the galaxy for a while, or rather, Saji 499 the sector but you you deserve your pay and that's definitely you know your key your key momentum in this demo you can't go get the pay yet because we haven't built it but uh, there is there's a few other paths you can go to and uh, and and actually that's because Ryko is such a large hub that there's a lot more stories that kind of build from there so that's still in production um, just building those sets now and they're beautiful I can't wait to share them maybe I'll put in a screenshot here too so you can see it so this is one of the first things that kind of happens where, uh, you know, you obviously you have just returned and you are alerted by Spark about an incoming message. And this is, you know, a choice to make at this point. It's your friend Kiraya, and she is contacting you with some urgency. So there's a little bit of intrigue with Spark here that plays out, but also the idea that that this is now another option. Um, you obviously want to go get your money or you want to continue on the current momentum of your life, but this sounds important and it might be important to you. Is it worth exploring? I guess you'll be the one to decide. The very final sort of branch of this initial set of, I guess, options plays itself out now, where you already know Spark is a little bit unbalanced, but something very strange occurs. Spark has no awareness of this happening, so there's something else going on. Some sort of a signal has been has been found. This is the the sort of top piece of a larger mystery throughout the entire experience. But again, it, it creates um, another choice for you where there's, there's a possibility of sort of exploring the unknown and following a mystery wherever it might lead. And who doesn't love a good mystery? We all love mysteries. One of my personal preferences um, in this experience, and obviously it's not meant for every experience, this is in this particular game, is that the UI, I'm trying to keep it to a minimum. I, I love the idea of exploring these visuals, of letting the players sort of discover points, obviously inspiration from a lot of the old LucasArts point-and-click games um, and you know any game that has been inspired by and developed that beautiful genre since. Um, this is definitely one of those moments where I, this, this map was made first, so I feel like eventually I'll come back and change it up and try something new. We will build something different. Um, but here, so for example, there's, there's this signal that has popped up on the map. Uh, Spark is acting really, really weird about it. Um, maybe doesn't even know it exists, but kind of knows it exists. There's something up here. So this is a, a side mystery that you know you can you can choose to follow. Um, it's not a wrong choice, and and again, I can't express how much because this is the shortest playthrough. This one is that lands uh, just a little bit below half an hour. Uh, in some of our plays of, of the demo, I've seen folks play for two hours, a little longer. It really depends how much you decide to read, what you choose to do, what you choose to engage with. 
Um, this path is one of my favorite for this demo in the sense of the visuals, but every one of them is different. Some have a lot more social engagement and meeting, meeting new people and deciding whether or not you want to meet new people. Um, but this, this signal is definitely a core mystery and I can't, I'm honestly so excited to hear what all of you find when you start to play and experience it for yourself. And particularly when the whole experience is all together and the full story can be, you know, experienced uh, play by play. There's a particular thrill too in uh, my friend Sebastian's beautiful tunes. Um, this path has a bit more of other tunes, including some of my own, but there are whole segments which are just created with his dulcet synth. It's such an honor to have that kind of work inside of an experience like this. And I think it's one of the things that makes a game so beautiful that it can be a mix of visuals, of storytelling, of writing, um, and of, of music. And it all comes together to create a unique experience that can't be emulated anywhere else, not in any other medium. So it's just really exciting. <laughs> yeah, I love that. <laughs> and it calls you a quitter. <laughs> uh. There are some sort of story journeys through here that are just full of social interaction and, and, and in a way, management, like our lives have. You know, there's, there's, there's people to meet and your own reactions to them. You as a player can decide if these people are people you're interested in speaking with or not, or you can sort of slough them off. These all have impact on where the story takes you. This path is particularly lonesome, or in the sense of it being very much you and Spark. I love, um, personally, I love sort of building these worlds and I love the sort of depth of Spark in some ways. This Spark is having an issue here, obviously a giant issue. So to sort of navigate through the issue <laughs> switches to side Spark, which is sort of a side side AI that kind of avoids the complications of the big one. Um, but again, this this sort of shows the choice levels that we're, that we're intending. The idea of the signal that you find, and you can decide, you know, how to engage with it. How, how you feel, do you want to, you know, once you have the signal collected, you can choose to stay or you can choose to go and chase it, as you'll see in a second. A little haunting. So we're going to chase, is what we're going to do. Coming from the world of illustration and animation, um, I love, I'm a very interdisciplinary artist. I love all kinds of mediums. I think games are so special though. There is something in the way of being able to build these these worlds, whether they are, you know, simple pixels, uh, painted, 3D. I mean, each of these requires a different sort of focus and all of them are difficult to put together. The, the idea of making these sort of interactive worlds is something I can't get over. This is my favorite path visually because I just love these things. Um, I love these these uh, paintings and the way that they sort of come to life in motion. And and being able to sort of create this box where you can look around and experience them. I mean, 
I'm consistently in love with this. I think it's just such a cool way to experience a story. And I think what's so thrilling about game design in general is that this is the way that I would approach sort of the concept. And each one of my teammates, um, you know, Adam uh, and Migs and Seb, they all bring something different to this to this experience. And it would not exist the way it does without them and without sort of the, the ideas we bring to it. And every person would, would make this differently, you know. So this is a bit of a tourism of the of the sector uh, of you know new 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 places that maybe people haven't even seen. But here you get to experience a comet, and uh, each one of these will take you through a place that is that may actually have relevance to the plot later on as well. But right now you're in the middle of a chase, so you have you know obviously there's there's an urgency to keep going. This path never puts you inside the ship, and many paths do put you inside the ship or inside other ships or places. So it's, again, the idea that you can never really quite know exactly what's waiting for you. There isn't a cookie cutter, and part of the excitement for me and for us as, as, as creators is that figuring out some of that experience as we go, obviously there's a whole story path that's taken some years to build, but there's, you know, how it plays out in games, you find out right away if it's any fun or not. And I just, you know, that, that part of the process is just can't be, can't be, uh, sped up. You have to just have to experience it through. This place has quite a bit of relevance, but you won't get to spend much time in it because you're still in the chase. Since one of the core aspects of In Cold Dark is the idea of no wasted play, um, that you can go through the game and experience the story and experience a different part later, there is also an element of replay and a continuity between plays. This is a huge aspect for me as 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 the creator because I love, I really enjoy when you get to sort of frolic in a world and see it from all kinds of perspectives and also not feel like you've you've squandered time because really none of us squander time. Nothing you do in this life is a waste of your time, it's just a choice. Uh oh, Spark's back and Spark's got something for you to do. Can't be great. So even though Spark is at this point, obviously overrun by something, taking control and has brought you here to this place, there is still a part of Spark that wants to help you and so sends out a distress signal on your behalf so that maybe you might get saved. This is the place where your path ends, as you can tell by the length of this video and what's left. <laughs> but uh, every play is a different length, and this one, this one I love because it it has an element of you really don't know what's out there. Obviously, we have a good sense of what's out there. We usually know, but there's something about this that can't be explained just yet. Um, but not this time.
This is the, at each of the end of the demos, obviously it's a, it's a, only a part of the experience, a small part, but they all finish with something sort of different and a special moment. This is the first hint with Kiraya that perhaps it may not be Kiraya that you're talking to in this memory. say honestly i'm so thrilled to share this with you thank you so much for watching uh watching this experience with me and uh experiencing our our very hard work i'm sure you have your own things like this and it's such a joy to be able to share it um we, this is as mentioned the point of this experience is to be played again and so one of the aspects is to invite the player to sort of try one more time there is i can't really describe to you how much changes every play even in this initial sort of demo phase there's a lot of variance um and i and please come to the come to the discord for hand eye society tell us what you think about the experience what you what you experience yourself if you like it any thoughts we'd love to hear um this is uh this has been a passion project for a while and um and there's and there's lots left to do but it's honestly just a thrill to be able to share it with you Once you complete your experience, as you can see, the game does sort of a traditional reset. But the very first thing it does is, an, is it invites you to play again. So please do. And uh, like I mentioned, if it isn't in a link somewhere, incolddark.com slash play, come and experience it for yourself. I would be thrilled to know. If you get a chance, follow us on, on Instagram, follow us on, uh, or come join the Discord if you like. Um, find us on, on itch.io this experience is still being built but we're really excited for you to try it out and um, you know experience the latest version so thank you again very much from the whole team stay safe <laughs>